I have been receiving messages and comments from people stating that they had the money in their DeFi wallet stolen from them and they were pretty sure almost 100% that they did not give away their 12 word seed phrase. I kept thinking to myself, at some point they definitely fell for a phishing scam and they gave away their 12 word seed phrase. So I looked into it and what I found was scary but I'm also happy that I found it so that I can share it with you in this video because on this channel we have a big focus on security and if you want to stay updated when it comes to security make sure to hit the like button and even more importantly subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification so that you find out about things right away and with that being said let's get into the content. Welcome aboard the Bitcoin Express. My name is Chase. Let's get to it. Crypto can be stolen from your DeFi wallet and the scammer does not even have to know the 12 word seed phrase. And not too long ago, there was a project called Lord of the Rings and they stole $185,000 worth of crypto from their users. Well, technically, they didn't steal the crypto. Technically, it was given to them with permission. Let me explain. So this project, which of course ended up being a scam, started off by creating a nice website. Everything looked great. They had fake partners, they had fake team members, and everything looked good to go. Now, whenever you interact with a DeFi protocol, you have to first give permission to spend your money, not spend all the money on your wallet, but specific tokens. So this was a project that was built on Binance Smart Chain. So just like any other DeFi protocol, users had to give permission to spend their BUSD, their Binance US dollar. And this is what it looked like. Just like any other transaction, there's a transaction fee and permission. And if we read closely, it says that Lore Finance may access and spend up to this max amount. And amount over here is one quadrillion BUSD, meaning that the project has permission to spend up to that amount per user. So basically, all of these users gave permission to this protocol, and then later on, because they had permission, they were able to take those funds. Not all of the funds on the wallet, but that specific token. And this does not have to be in real time, right? This could be days later, weeks later, even months later, as long as the wallet is still allowing permission to spend those tokens. And what we see here is not very uncommon. We have seen similar transaction approvals on approved audited projects. Trustworthy projects generally come with the backing of solid audit results from reputable companies and all contracts are verified for the public to see. For example, let's take a look at Yearn Finance. This is a trusted protocol. It has been audited and verified. Let's say I'm on Yearn Finance and I want to deposit one USDT. First, I have to give it permission to spend my tokens. So here it will show the transaction fee. And if we view full transaction details, we'll see the permission. And if we click on edit, it will show unlimited, right? Or we can set a custom spend limit. So with these bigger, more trusted protocols, Many of them actually have an unlimited spend for a specific cryptocurrency, but many of us look past it. So when you're dealing with these bigger projects, right, Uniswap, Yearn Finance, the big names, not so much a problem, but there are many projects out there, small projects that will steal your money, whether it is maliciously or it is by accident. So giving unlimited ERC-20 allowances is considered harmful. And you might be wondering, why do they even do this? And the reason is it is for user experience because every time you want to make a transaction with the protocol, you would have to spend a fee, right, to approve the token. So instead of that, you just make a one-time approval for unlimited spend. It allows for a superior user experience because the user does not need to approve a new allowance every time they want to deposit tokens. By setting up an unlimited allowance, the user just needs to approve it once and not repeat the process for subsequent deposits. And I do wanna clarify that this is not even specific to Ethereum, right? This is to other chains as well. This Lore Finance rug was on Binance Smart Chain. So once you connect to a protocol, you will give it permission to spend the token. You can either choose the unlimited or you can set a specific amount. And when you give permission for your tokens to be spent an unlimited amount, it can be stolen in two ways. The first way is actually not malicious. It is due to a hack or a bug. For example, another high profile bug exploit was the Furu combo hack 
in February 2021, where a bug in the Furukama protocol enabled a hacker to drain the wallets of people who gave an allowance to Furo Combo, even if they didn't have any funds deposited into the contract directly. So in that first case, it wasn't the project itself stealing. They were hacked, there was a bug. Anyone that gave permission to spend all or an unlimited amount of that specific crypto, they had their funds stolen. And then we have the malicious, the malicious scams, right? Like we saw with Lord Finance, that was on Binance Smart Chain. We also saw this in the past on Ethereum with Unicax. And this was because it was a malicious project and they simply took the money from their users. And remember, it was not all the money in the wallet, it was the approved tokens. So it was the uni tokens that users had in their wallet. Now, in terms of protecting ourselves, there are a few things we can do. The first thing is on the developer side. They can change these settings in the wallet to protect the user. Some examples are Curve Finance and ZapperFi. For example, if we head over to ZapperFi and we went to approve this trade for USDT, it will show the normal transaction fee. And if we view the full transaction details and click on edit by permissions, instead of it showing unlimited, it actually shows a proposed approval limit or we can set a custom spend limit. So this is on the developer side. But let's say you are one of these users. How do you know what is at risk? Luckily, there are sites where you can check the health of your DeFi wallet. A very good one is dbank.com. I will leave a link down below. You will come to this website, you will connect your wallet, and then you can look at all of your approvals across multiple chains, Ethereum, Binance, XDAI, Polygon, you know, Avalanche coming soon. Remember, this isn't specific to Ethereum, this isn't specific to MetaMask, this is multiple wallets and multiple platforms. So in this wallet, it will show you your total risk exposure for each cryptocurrency. So let's say you're on this site and there's a token approval for a crypto that you own and the risk level is you may lose, you know, $5,000 worth of that crypto, you can actually revoke the permission. So if you go to this website and you click on decline, you can revoke permission. However, it is important to note that every time you revoke a permission, that is a transaction as well. So there is a gas fee. And revoking permission really depends on the protocol. If you're dealing with a protocol that's trusted and verified, Uniswap, Compound, you're in finance, Maybe it's not a big deal, but when you're dealing with these lesser known projects that are not verified, it is a very big deal. So let's say there is a protocol that you know you are going to be using for a long time, every day, all the time, then maybe it makes sense to have unlimited allowance. But let's say you're using a protocol that you know you're only going to use a few times, or maybe you know it's a one-time thing, you can go in, edit it, and set a custom limit, right? A smaller allowance. You need to protect your crypto. And often we speak about hardware wallets, how it protects your crypto. In this case, it actually doesn't really help the problem, although hardware wallets are still a very smart decision because the problem with ERC-20 allowances though is that no one needs to steal your private keys to take the tokens from your wallet. And because of that, hardware wallets offer no protection whatsoever to the exploits discussed in this article. However, I still recommend hardware wallets. You can get a ledger or a trezor and you can connect it to MetaMask. This is all about these permissions and you can revoke these permissions. Also, something else, something else to look out for is you can check to see if the contract is verified and you don't have to be a developer. You don't have to be a coder. For example, if we go to BCS scan for Binance Smart Chain projects and we search for Lore Finance, it will bring us to their page. And if we scroll down to read contract, it will, it will show, sorry, we were unable to locate a matching contract. If you are the owner, please verify your contract. So this is already is a big red flag. And if we click over here on contract, scroll down, contract over here, and we see anything that looks like this, this is a huge red flag. This is not what it should look like. Instead, it should look something like this. So here is your in finance. If we scroll down to contract, it will look a lot different than it did with, let's say, Lore Finance. And then if we actually click on contract over here, we can see that there is a green check mark contract source code verified. So when you're using a tool like DBank, it will actually show you the contracts that you are connected to and it will show the approved amounts. So let's say you want to check this contract, right? I can click on this contract. It will bring me to Etherscan. 
If I click on contract, I can see the green check mark and contract source code verified. So even if you're not a developer or you know, a programmer and you go to a project's contract and you see something that looks funny, something like this, a big red flag and you want to run away. So I want to repeat again, whenever you use a protocol, you can edit the spend limit and it will all depend on how you use the protocol. If it's something you're going to be using very often every day, then maybe it makes sense to keep it at an unlimited spend. However, if it is something you know you're only going to use once or a few times, you can lower that spend limit to protect yourself from losing that token. Because remember, this doesn't give access to all the crypto in your wallet. It is for specific tokens. And if you also want to stay away from phishing scams when it comes to these wallets, including MetaMask, go ahead and watch this video link right above and in the description down below. And don't forget to like this video. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.